Today, we become awesome and make ourselves a do-it-yourself slate board. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Tomorrow's Filmmakers. My name is Justice McCraney and today we are talking about how to make a do-it-yourself slate board instead of having to go buy one yourself. Now, you can buy a decent one for probably like $35, maybe get a really nice one for about $45, and if that's the way you want to go, then go do that. But whenever I first wanted to buy some sort of slate board, I thought, you know what, I want to make one myself. So I went on YouTube, I looked online for some really cool tutorial, and literally there is nothing. It is terrible. And if there are ones, they're really unprofessional, they're really cheap, and they're just terrible looking. So I went ahead and just bought myself one. And that's how I ended up with this one. But looking back on it, I really wish I would have made my own slate board. Like this one. Okay, so I understand. Some of your questions you might be thinking is, why should I make my own slate board? I mean, I could go buy one, why should I make one? And there's a couple reasons why. One, it's actually cheaper. To make all of this, everything that we bought was probably like 20 bucks. Now, a lot of the stuff in here, we had laying around at the house, but I just decided to go buy it all anyway to see how much it would be. But if you have all this stuff laying around, then I guess it doesn't cost you anything. Or say you have like half of the stuff laying around, then it only costs you 10 bucks. So for $10, you could make your own do-it-yourself slate board. Two, you can customize it to say anything you want it to say. I mean, a lot of these say roll, scene, take, and have all these random options, but for me, I customized it to what I needed. I was tired of it saying roll, so I changed it to card because that's more what I'm gonna be using. I didn't want all that stuff at the bottom, so I took it all out, so I customized it to how I wanted it to be, and you can do the exact same thing. If you buy one, you can't customize it. And three, it is actually much higher quality than the one that you're gonna be able to find online. This one is wood, this one is really thick, and it's very durable and very sturdy. This one is nice, but it's very, very thin, and the whole part right here is the dry erase board. Now the only problem with that is it's very difficult to hold without smearing anything, because you might be writing something, and then since it's so thin, you have to hold it almost underneath it or on the side, and you might kind of smear some of the writing that you've been doing. So that's kind of annoying. But if you look at the stupid expensive ones that are like $1,500, they're actually thick. And why is that? So that you can hold it easier. And so with ours, we went ahead and made it that thick. So there's no more really thin stuff and trying to hold it. It's really, really durable, and I think you guys Will really enjoy it. So if now you guys are wanting to make a do-it-yourself clapboard, then let's get to it. So there's a few things that you guys are going to need to make your do-it-yourself slate board. A square wooden dowel rod, a piece of plywood, some wood glue, I prefer Gorilla Glue, that's the best, some bolts with some nuts on the end, a couple 50 cent metal plates, and some sort of dry erase board. But we're going to be going through each step and explain it so much better in just a little bit. So we're gonna be putting this together in pieces, not just all together at once. So first we're gonna start out with the top piece, which is gonna be the clapper part. So if you go to Lowe's, you'll probably find many different pieces of woods, all different shapes and sizes. But many of the wood that I found is like too flat or too small, and it wasn't what I was looking for. So looking at the wooden dowel rods, I compared them to the actual clapboard that I have, and they were like the perfect size. So I, I found the largest ones, and it works great. So this is going to be our actual clapper part. Now here's where you can customize it to whatever you want, whatever size you want. If you want it longer, make it longer. If you want it shorter, make it shorter. You can do whatever you want. But the standard size for clappers is about 11 inches long. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna measure mine for 11 inches and then cut our two pieces. Now, since our hands are gonna be like all over this and you're gonna be holding it all the time, we don't wanna get some unearthly crazy splinters, which you might have. So if you wanna take some sandpaper and just go ahead and sand down all the edges of the clapperboard, the corners, the sharp edges, all the tips, whatever it is, whatever your hands will be touching until it feels smooth and so much better. And if you have a sander, use that or just some sandpaper. 
So since these are actually gonna be moving up and down a lot and like rotating, they actually won't work just how they are together. The top piece actually has to have a small cut in it so that it will actually rotate. And looking at my other clapper, what they've done is they've just rounded off the edge and this makes it able to move up and down. So if you don't have that, your clappers aren't gonna work. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to give it room to rotate. So you can actually just make a cut and just cut the bottom off of it, or you can try to round it off a little bit, but either way, it'll work fine as long as you can give it room to rotate. And if for some reason you find out that it doesn't work or it's not enough, you can easily just take it apart and cut more off it. That's actually what I had to do because I tried it and it wasn't enough. Now, if you don't care about how the top piece looks and you just want it to look like wood, then more power to you, make it look like wood. But I wanted to look like as much of a slate board as possible, so I wanted to paint mine. Now, if you have maybe an old clapper board, a lot of the things on the front are just stickers, so maybe you can just peel that off and stick that on your clapper board. That could work as well, but we're gonna paint ours. So we're first gonna paint it completely white, and that might take a couple of coats for it to dry, but we wanna make it completely white so that we can start writing on it. Now, if we take our 45 degree angle or whatever tool you have, we're gonna start making lines all the way down our sticks at a 45 degree angle. Now to make sure they lined up perfectly with the other piece of wood, I went ahead and made a tiny little line on the next piece of wood where that one line ended. That way I can take the 45 degree angle and just stick it on that little dot and make the lines all the way down the other piece of wood. Now that might sound confusing, but basically we just want the arrows to be pointing away from the actual rotating part. And you can do that in any way that you want to, but I just found the 45 degree tool works the best. Now, if you're like uh, extremely skilled in painting, then maybe you could just go ahead and paint this by hand. But since I am not and I need some help, I'm gonna get some help. So basically what I did is the parts that I wanted to stay white, I covered those parts up with painter's tape. So you just stick the painter's tape on there, and sometimes it's a, little, it's a little bit difficult to cut it, but stick the painter's tape on there. Then all you have to do is paint the entire thing black and then take off the tape. And now whenever you take off the tape, the white part is seen and the black part. And it's probably gonna be needing two coats as well. Now sometimes the paint kind of bleeds through, but if that does, I would just go ahead and use a very tiny paintbrush and just touch it up a little bit, make it look a lot better so that it looks really, really nice. Now the reason that we go ahead and paint all of it first is because if you try to put it all together and get everything perfect and screw it in and all that kind of stuff and then try to paint it, I mean you could paint over something or mess something up and have to take it all off again. It's just so much better to go ahead and paint them before you start putting them together. So that's why we painted it first. And now that we have our clapper sticks completely ready and completely painted, now it's time to put them together. So what you'll need to put these together is you need those two 50 cent metal plates that you can find at the wood section at Lowe's and three bolts with nuts on the end. I mean, that's all you need. So with the two clapper boards, we're gonna have one hole at the very top and two holes at the very bottom. And this is gonna be what rotates. And we're also gonna have the metal plates stuck to the sides of them. But as you can see, the metal plates are actually really, really long, and there's no way that we can actually use a clapperboard with metal plates this long. So we're gonna have to cut it. And if we look at our old clapboard, we can see what they did with the metal plates. They gave them an angle and kind of rounded them off so that you weren't getting cut or poked or something whenever you're trying to do the clapboard. So that's exactly what we're gonna do with our metal plates. Now, if you have some sort of zaza or saw or something, you can use that. But these metal plates are actually thin enough that we can cut it with these massive cutters. So if that works, then go ahead and use that. And all we want to do is cut it so that one hole is at the top and two holes are at the bottom. And it leaves it kind of an angle, just enough so that you don't cut yourself on it whenever you lift up the clapperboard and put it back down. So now we are ready to drill the holes. So we first place the sticks together, then we place the metal plates that we just cut on those sticks. Then we go ahead and look and see where those holes are gonna be, make those marks, and we drill all three holes all the way through the clapper sticks, enough that the bolts can fit in there. Now, if the bolts are a little bit bigger, you're probably gonna have to drill a little bit bigger holes in the actual metal plates as well. But don't be like me and be dumb and not measure to see if the bolts actually fit through the wood. I don't know why I didn't, but I just thought, hey, they fit through the wood. No, they don't. They actually didn't fit all the way through the wood. So, like an idiot, I had to actually had to shave off a little bit of the back of the wood 
and whatever. It looks stupid, but it's in the back and we painted it white and hopefully no one cares. So now what we do is we stick the metal plate on the clapper sticks, then we stick all three bolts in there till they come out the other side. Then the other metal plate should fit right on top of them. And then all we do is tighten down the bolts. And there we go. We have a fully functional clapper sticks. Now the top bolt is what you're gonna be using if you want to tighten it or make it looser or tighter or easier to move or not easier to move. The other two you just wanna tighten down a lot because that's just gonna be holding it in place. And now that we have created that, it's time to actually make the slate board. So with the big piece of plywood we have, you can buy one of these or you can just you know, find one around the house, but you can cut it to however long you want it to be. If you want your clapboard to be extra long or extra wide or whatever you want, you can cut it to however you want it to be. But for me, I'm basing my clapboard off the really expensive TS-3, which is like $1,500. Now with normal clapboards like this, they're 11 inches across and about nine and a half to nine and three quarters inches long. And that's from the top of the clapper board all the way down to the bottom, not just the actual dry erase part, the entire thing. So this would actually be only seven and a half inches long and that's what we're gonna be cutting. Now, if you want that, you can do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut the piece of wood to be six and a half inches long because that's about how long I want it to be. That's not including the clapper sticks. That is only what you want to use as your dry erase board. So whatever you'd like it to be, go ahead and cut it those dimensions. And whenever you cut it, it might seem really, really tiny or like, man, I cut it too small. You didn't. Whenever you actually put it on the clapper boards and you start using it, then you'll see that it actually looks the right size. And with the one I had, it actually has two of these small edge cuts on the side. So I went ahead and made mine the same way, exactly like it is on there. And it actually is starting to look really good. So just like the clapper sticks, you're gonna be touching this a lot. And we don't wanna get some deadly splinter and have to take someone to the emergency room because of their finger. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sand it down just like we did the clapper sticks. Go ahead and sand the edges, sand the back, sand the front, sand all of it so that it's very smooth and does not give you any splinters at all. And after we do that, now it's time to paint it. So I went ahead and painted mine completely black. You wanna paint the back of it, the sides of it, and whatever else you can, probably gonna to have to give a couple of coats. But what I didn't wanna do is paint the very front of it, because we're gonna be gluing the dry erase board to that, and I didn't wanna glue it all to paint. But I did go ahead and paint the very outside of the front so that whenever I stick the dry erase board on there and there's a little bit of the wood showing, it shows black and not shows actual wood. And now we have our clapper sticks and we have our piece of wood that has been cut and sanded and painted and looks great and it's ready to go. And I am actually very excited. I think it looks very good. Now we have a couple of options when it comes to dry erase board. If you have an old dry erase board at home or steal it from your mom's, you know, school room or whatever, then use that. I actually found one for like a dollar at a yard sale, so I bought that one. You can also go to Walmart and they have like the back to school dry erase boards that are pretty small for like two bucks or they have just a little bit bigger ones for like four dollars. So for two or four bucks, you can get a pretty decent sized uh, dry erase board that'll be perfect for your slate. So if we go ahead and take our dry erase board and we just go ahead and take it apart and get all the stuff around it, we can actually see that the dry erase board is a sheet of metal. So it's not just like a little piece of plastic. It's metal that you can cut yourself on, so just be careful with that. But what is super annoying about this dry erase board is that for some reason they decided to put cardboard stuff all over the back of it. So now we have all this cardboard particle stuff everywhere and we can't use that. So we have to get that off. So if you use a little bit of water and a paint scraper and just go ahead and scrape all that off, we can get all that cardboard junk off of it. But you don't wanna use the corner of the scraper because then you actually might put dents all the way through to the other side and then it'd be ruined. And now we have our cleaned off piece of dry erase board and I'm excited because it's looking good. So actually, since we already have our piece of wood cut to get the dry erase board, the shape of the piece of wood is very simple. You just stick the piece of wood on the dry erase board and take a pencil and trace it, and there you go, simple as that. So after we've done that, we can go ahead and cut that out, and you can use some sort of saw if you want, but it's actually so thin that you can just use an ordinary pair of scissors, and it works great. And I actually found that using scissors, I have a lot more control over the types of cuts and things like that, so I like to use scissors. 
Now you do want to be a little bit careful because you do not want at all the dry erase board to be hanging over the edge or a corner sticking out because you could cut yourself on it and it would be kind of sharp. So what I went ahead and did is cut it, the whole thing, all around the edges, just a little bit, just to make sure that it is inside the piece of wood and not hanging over or anything like that. So now to connect our dry erase board to the piece of wood, we're simply just gonna be using Gorilla Glue. And Gorilla Glue is awesome and works wonders. So we first placed a lot of Gorilla Glue all over the actual piece of wood and went all around it, tried to get as close to the edges as we possibly could. But then we also flipped the dry erase board around and put Gorilla Glue all over the edges of it, just to make sure that those edges get stuck down. Cause I don't want any edges sticking up, cutting yourselves, corners, peeling up, whatever it is, I don't want any of that. So all we did is put it all over the dry erase board stick that on there and then press it really hard and then be sure to wipe all the Gorilla Glue that might ooze out the sides or anything like that. Just go ahead and wipe that off and then place something really heavy on top of that and then we just have to wait. 12 seconds later. And look at it. It's, it's beautiful. It's just gorgeous. One of our final steps is to actually put the two pieces together. Now, the piece of wood is actually thick enough that if you wanted to, you could actually use a wood screw and go all the way through the clapper sticks into the slate board. But that's just a little bit scary because if you screw it in there and it comes out a side or if it splits the wood, you're done. You, you're done. Everything's gone. I ain't wanting that. So, uh, Gorilla Glue is amazing. It's, it's amazing. So what we did is we put Gorilla Glue on the very top of the slate board and then stuck the clapper sticks onto it. Now, if we just wanted to use Gorilla Glue, it would probably work and it would probably hold really well. But I wanted it a little bit sturdier than just Gorilla Glue. So I took a nail gun and I put the nail gun through the clapper board into the slate board. And nail gun with Gorilla Glue means it ain't going anywhere. It's there for life. And the nail gun is actually a lot thinner and allows me to aim it better so I'm not just, you know, throwing screws around there and messing something up. It, it's so beautiful. And we made it. We, we made this. Now this is where it actually can get a lot of fun. And that's because you have complete control of whatever you want to put on your dry erase board. You can customize it to whatever you want it to say. Whatever your heart's desire is, you can do it. No one will judge you. You made this. You can say whatever you want. Do you want the production to be at the top above roll scene and take? Do that. Do you want to just take out the entire production section? Do that. It doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want to do and it's entirely up to you. Now it might take a little bit of time trying to figure it out. And what you want to do is probably write it down and draw it out on a piece of paper. We went through like five or six different things that we were thinking of or how it should look before we found out exactly what we wanted. So for me, my old slate, had options that I didn't really need, didn't really use, you know, they were just kind of, didn't make sense. I didn't really need the camera operator because I was always filming it. And even if I wasn't filming it, it wasn't really important to me. I just needed a director. So I went ahead and just took the camera operator completely out of it. Then at the bottom, they had all the interior, exterior, day, night, all that kind of stuff. I never really used them. So I just went ahead and got rid of that. And if you look at the really expensive clapboards, those aren't even on there. So after many sketches and ideas, we figured out exactly what we wanted. Card, scene, take, production, director, camera, frames per second, and date. So now you need to take that idea and put it onto your slate board. But before you do that, I would suggest practicing a lot, making sure you know exactly what you wanna do. You can use a piece of paper, or what I did is I had some extra dry erase board, so I went ahead and cut it out exactly like this was, just to practice, just to use a Sharpie and practice it. So, using your leveler and a pencil, you can make all your lines across and vertical so you can go ahead and trace them afterwards. So after you've done that and made it look really nice, next we're going to be taking a sharpie and a leveler and we're going to go ahead and trace that. Being careful, vertical, across, all the lines we want to look really good. So we take our sharpie, we go across, across, across until we make all the boxes and it's exactly how you wanted it. And now all we have to do is write in the boxes exactly what these things are. Now here's a tip on that, okay? Find the nearest woman in your proximity, okay? And have her do it. You'll thank me later. Women are always better at handwriting. They just are. 
Now, one more tip that I would recommend is a Sharpie is great and everything for dry erase board, but if you're using it a lot and touching it a whole lot, it can start to smear and maybe rub off just a little bit. So what I would suggest doing is maybe going to Hobby Lobby and getting a paint pen. What that is, is it is a pen, kind of like a Sharpie, but it's paint. And what that does is you can trace every single thing that you did with the Sharpie, and then that's not coming off. That's not going to rub off with anything because it is literally paint on there. And now we have our own do-it-yourself dry erase board that we have made from scratch. It's thick, it's durable, it's heavy duty. We've made our own clapper sticks. We've customized it to whoever we want it to be. So listen guys, if you wanna purchase your own clapboard, I'm not saying not to, go ahead and do that and you'll use it and it'll be great. But if you guys wanna make your own clapboard and customize it to however you want it to be, put your own things on here and make it just for you, then I hope this video really helped you out. I had a lot of fun making this, and I hope you guys did too. So if you wanna follow me and all my social media stuffers, you can go right there. So stay tuned, we're gonna be talking about more clapboards, but we're actually gonna be talking about clapboard apps for the iPad and things like that, so stay tuned for that. So thank you guys so much for watching this, and thank you so much for committing to make films for his glory.